so a uh, topic for today is um, managing compliance um, and uh, I'll talk a little bit about uh, how we define compliance in a company setting but uh, first of all, a little bit of background information on top of what you just said. I'm um, originally from Germany. You probably hear my, my accent, um, so excuse me if you don't understand something, you can, can ask. Um, I used to work in automotive, did some consulting work. Uh, seven years ago, moved uh, to the US, was hired by an energy company to introduce business process management. This was pretty much also my, my journey um, around compliance management. So we realized two things. Um, one, energy companies in general are very much compliance driven. So almost everything that we do, had, there is some compliance aspect. Uh, and um, second, uh, there's a lot of room for, for improvement. So a lot of compliance work is still very manually done uh, through emails, uh, paper forms, um, and really manual record keeping. Um, so this is basically also the topic of uh, my presentation today. I want to talk, uh, as I said, a little bit about compliance. I want to introduce an idea that we came up with called Agile uh, Business Process Management. And I want to show you how we used that concept um, to address uh, compliance issues with uh, our company. Okay, let's get started. Compliance. So most of us, when we think about compliance, we think about rules and regulations and we have to follow it. Um, but I think most of the compliance uh, topics in, in companies are around internal policies, around best practices. They are not necessarily uh, mandatory, but often voluntary on a voluntary basis. So for example, if you want to comply to ISO 14001, 9001, these are voluntary compliance standards. From a, a risk, from a compliance risk standpoint, um, it, there is, you have to think about if, if you want to have acceptable or unacceptable compliance risk associated with your work. And if, we talk, if I talk about managing compliance, it's really about making sure that um, the folks uh, in my company, in your company, do not circumvent your compliance processes. Uh, so what does it mean? Um, <clears throat> this is a, a, a slide on the left side is how we worked five years ago um, and on the right side is how we work today. So it's a both, a, both of it is a um, incident management process specifically around spills. So we have a lot of generating assets uh, uh, around the world. Um, there we, have, we have quite some spills also um, on a smaller scale and um, whenever we have a spill on site, um, it, five years ago we had to fill out that paper form the person who filled it out had to get sign off from the operation from the site manager uh, that was most likely that form was uh, being uploaded and then sent via email to the respective environmental manager hopefully the person knew who that environmental manager is then uh, the environmental manager had to check if there is any agency that needed to be notified and um, then had to implement corrective action depending on the severity every environmental manager worked a little bit different went back to the site, site implemented corrective actions, went back to the environmental manager, reviewed it, and then there was an effectiveness assessment three to six months after the corrective action was implemented. You can imagine um, it was very manual. Uh, there were a lot of points where people just lost track of the actual incident. Um, effectiveness assessment uh, almost in every case did not happen. So on the right side is how we manage incidents as of today. Uh, each of our uh, technicians on site, they have a mobile device. They can take a picture of that incident, upload it, uh, submit it. It is directly uh, routed to the right environmental uh, responsible. Um, there is a set of business rules who determine how severe that incident is, if an agency has to be notified, if corrective actions have to be performed, a 5 y analysis, root cause analysis has to be performed. Um, a task is being assigned to a, a person on site to implement the corrective action and then there's a timer who triggers an effectiveness assessment after X months. Yeah. Um, there's very little room for um, you know, losing that, that uh, incident. Um, everybody, there's, a, there's a constant chain of custody. Everybody knows what to do and when. Um, compliance challenges that we're dealing with in our industry a lot, but I, I think that's um, also applicable to your industries. Uh, I feel over the last 10 years there's really a, an increase in, in, in 
regulatory change. Um, just to name a few areas that we have uh, a lot of challenges with is uh, Dot Frank. We have a small trading environment. We have to comply to Dot Frank requirements. We have a lot of uh, state and federal purchasing requirements that are can be quite uh, cumbersome. FCPA, your, your Foreign Corrupt Practices Act, is, is uh, uh, very extensive. Um, <clears throat> audit and record keeping, I think over the last couple of years, very much increased, hence compliance cost for companies increased. Some of these regulations have a global reach. So for example, your Foreign Corrupt Practices Act has essentially a, gro a global reach. Um, and then there's a cultural change, I think, that happened over the last couple of years towards risk-based thinking. Um, what I mean with that is you, you really have to balance um, what is acceptable compliance risk. Huh? So if you have a supplier qualification, for example, I think most of the companies, they have a low risk um, supplier qualification process and a critical supplier qualification process. And obviously, they spend more time, resources, effort, control steps um, in relationship to their critical suppliers. Huh? Um, so that's all like risk-based thinking, basically, or exception-based processing that companies are applying. So this is kind of like the, the environment that we are, uh, we are in right now. Um, compliance is, is steadily increasing. We have a challenge to keep up with. And um, we um, started using a concept called Agile BPM in order to understand the idea. I, want to, I have one slide prepared for you to explain you what Agile means, and then we can talk a little bit about how BPM technology can help you on your compliance management journey. So HL is very, very simple, and I did not invent that. This is out there. A lot of tech companies, startup companies, are using that kind of concept. I think Google earlier, um, they uh, described this as launch uh, and iterate. Um, it's essentially you, you're building a minimum viable process or minimum viable product. You launch it. You measure it. So you have to, it, it's the measurement phase very much data driven. Plus, you have to know what you measure, so you have to implement some, uh, you have to think about some uh, actionable metrics. And then you perform validated learning. So you take what you have measured and you improve your, your process or your tool. Um, and it's an iterative process, so you want to do that again and again. Yeah. Um, that's pretty much what Agile methodology means in a nutshell. How can BPM technology help you? We learned already at the example that I mentioned uh, at the beginning of the presentation, there are a couple of features that these BPM technologies have um, that help you a lot uh, with uh, managing your compliance journey. Constant, change of cu uh, constant chain of custody, I think, is very important to have in place. Um, features around uh, audit trail. I think most of the BPM technologies have that as well. Notification and escalation management features, quick process changes. So if you have a very manual uh, way of, of working, implementing process changes can be very cumbersome. You might have to rewrite your procedure, have to get buy-in, approval, have to roll it out, have to make sure that every employee um, has really the latest um, form, latest procedure on hand. And essentially, if you have an automated uh, process, automated workflow, the um, process changes are implemented, the user is guided through the different step. Yeah? The user doesn't necessarily have to know everything. Yeah? And um, on top of it, I think the analytics feature is really important if, if you're on a compliance, uh, um, if you're dealing with compliance processes, you have to prove compliance. I know a lot of companies spending a lot of time trying to find uh, records um, in the realm of their record management uh, environment. A lot of these BPM tools have um, record keeping uh, solutions already built in. There is um, a process uh, simulation features that they offer, um, as well as real-time reporting that can be really helpful. Okay, this is the conceptual part. Let's switch over and look at some examples. First example that I have for you is um, Compliance reporting to a government agency, that's something that we started doing a couple of years ago. We have to record and report activities related to um, construction of a power plant. Requirements in this uh, context were really just guidelines. And um, the requirements were passed through Senate and Congress like beginning of December. And we had to comply to them the beginning of January. So we had a couple of weeks time. We created a minimum viable process or an MVP within a week, tested it, rolled it out. It was a simple activity tracker. Um, 
we spend a lot of focused a lot on rapid adaption. What we call rapid adaption is really having um, time triggered features that being sent out task assignments being sent out to the various users that we have using this tool. Uh, they perform their work that can be on a daily basis, weekly basis, monthly basis, really depends on the, on the department. There's a um, reporting cycle. So we take, we, we look at the usage reports, we provide that to the line managers, to senior executives, and um, we have buy-in to act on behalf of those reports. So we are going out to the different departments, really making sure that they are using those compliance tools. Um, we have captured within uh, one and a half years over 14,000 activities that are uh, related to the construction of a power plant. And we have currently, uh, for this specific tool, more than 100 active users that are basically using that tool on a daily um, or on a weekly basis. Another example that I have for you is uh, what we call obligations tracking. It's a much larger initiative. We need to respond to um, on a, on a daily, monthly basis to thousands of obligations. Um, some of these derivate from um, what we call power purchase agreements. These are very large agreements that we have with, uh, with customers. We have um, finance agreements. We have a lot of environmental obligations that we have to comply to on a continuous basis. Challenge with this was really that a lot of it was done on a manual basis. Um, I know employees took very well care of the time triggered obligations so that the obligations that occur on a monthly basis because they often had like um, calendar invites uh, for example on their on their email um, to to um, kind of notify them that they have to do work but where we really did a bad job was on the event triggered obligations so for example you have um, credit rating of your company changes, you have to perform certain obligations. That was often something that was not on the immediate radar of, of our employees. So what we've done, we built a, an MVP uh, that was within a month. It's a record keeping and notification tool. What we have done also is we really um, thought about which are important metrics that we want to have in place. And for the adoption phase of the tool, we really focused on quanti quantitative metrics. So really usage, how many obligations have we entered, and then after the adoption phase, we uh, changed our metrics more towards a qualitative uh, approach. We are looking now at obligation fulfillment ratio, that means um, the obligations that require some uh, fulfillment, uh, some record keeping, out of those, how many have been actually being fulfilled on a continuous basis. and. Um, Within a one and a half year period of time, we were able to capture more than 4,000 obligations that we are now actively manage in our tool. A lot more department involved. I think we have more than 20 departments who are using this tool either as a record keeping tool or, um, and or as a notification tool in place. This is it basically from my side, a very uh, short summary. What we've learned today is uh, that there is an increasing complexity um, in, in, in my industry, but I think in a lot of other industries, pharmaceutical industries, I can imagine as well. One way is to address this um, complexity increase with, with agility, with agile BPM. And how you do that is you build tools and, and processes to manage uh, compliance by using BPM technology. And you use methods like MVPs, validated learning, to get employees to use a new process or tool in a very quick manner. That's it. Thanks a lot. I think um, it was pretty quick. Glad to be pretty quick.